Diplomatic efforts are intensifying on both sides of the Atlantic to resolve the Ukraine crisis. In Washington, U.S. President Joe Biden held talks with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. Biden stressed that Germany is a reliable partner and that they will work together to try and find a diplomatic solution. Meanwhile, French President Emmanuel Macron traveled to Moscow for talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Macron said the next few days would be decisive in efforts to avoid conflict. Putin said he was willing to compromise. An urgent diplomatic push. World leaders met in the Russian and U.S. capitals in an effort to defuse tension over Ukraine. In his first visit to Washington as German Chancellor, Olaf Scholz sat down with U.S. President Joe Biden to pursue what they called a diplomatic resolution to the crisis. I have been very, very straightforward and blunt with President Putin, both on the phone and in person. We will impose the most severe sanctions that have ever been imposed, economic sanctions. I think he has to realize that it would be a gigantic mistake for him to move on Ukraine. The impact on Europe and the rest of the world would be devastating. One of the biggest targets for sanctions is the Nord Stream 2 pipeline project to bring gas from Russia to Germany. Biden said in clear terms he would shut it down if Russia invades. But Schultz made no such guarantee, vowing only a unified response. We will be united. We will act together and we will take all the necessary steps and all the necessary steps will be done by all of us together. Will you commit today to turning off and pulling the plug on Nord Stream 2? You didn't mention it, you haven't mentioned it. As I already said, we are acting together. We are absolutely united and we will not taking different steps. We will do the same steps and they will be very, very hard to Russia and they should understand. With at least 100,000 Russian troops massed along Ukraine's border, Berlin has faced international criticism for its cautious response. Unlike some of its NATO allies, Germany has ruled out sending weapons to Ukraine. Meanwhile in Moscow, French President Emmanuel Macron focused on de-escalation. Russia's Vladimir Putin reiterated his demands for NATO to stay out of the region, but said he was willing to compromise. A number of Macron's ideas and proposals, which are probably too early to speak about, I consider quite possible to use in forming the basis of our further joint steps. As far as we are concerned, we will do everything to find compromises that suit everyone. Macron will hold talks in Kiev on Tuesday before heading to Berlin, a long week of diplomacy for European leaders hoping to avoid conflict. For more, let's speak to Gerhard Mangot. He's a professor of international relations at the University of Innsbruck and an expert on Russian and U.S. foreign policy. Thanks for joining us. Professor, a flurry of diplomacy is underway, focusing on Russia and Ukraine. Let's start with that meeting between the German and U.S. leaders in Washington. Are you convinced by the show of unity between Scholz and Biden? Well, definitely it was important for Mr. Scholz to show that Germany is a reliable ally, and that's what he said, we are absolutely united. But it was uh, really noticeable that after Biden uh, confirmed that Nord Stream 2 would not go ahead after a Russian incursion in Ukraine, uh, Scholz did not want to state that explicitly as well. So we still have doubts whether in the case of a Russian incursion in Ukraine, the German government will really be ready uh, to stop Nord Stream 2. On the other side, um, Biden has made clear, even if the uh, Germans don't do it, we have the means available to stop it, and we will stop it. OK, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline project has been a thorn in the side of German-U.S. relations for quite some time. But why do you think, aside from that, why do you think the two leaders are being so vague about the sanctions they would impose if Russia does invade Ukraine again? Well, it seems that there's some disunity between the two sides, maybe among various other NATO allies as well. Uh, in, uh, if that would not be the case, uh, they would clearly have stated what kind of sanctions will be imposed in the case of a Russian incursion, 
but they have not done so. We have had statements by uh, Biden administration officials about what type of sanctions they are envisaging, but it seems that um, there's still some uh, work to do to unite uh, at least the Germans and the Americans on what to do after, after such a military invasion. Let's move on to Moscow. Uh, French President Emmanuel Macron met uh, President Putin there yesterday. Putin hinted at a possible compromise in the Ukraine crisis. Any idea what he meant by that? Well, it was very noticeable that ahead of the uh, talks between Putin and Macron, Macron stated uh, that uh, a Finlandization of Ukraine uh, was on the table. Uh, Finlandization means uh, that Ukraine would be absolutely free in its domestic politics, but would be limited in its foreign policy options. This refers to the status of Finland during the Cold War, uh, which could preserve its independence and democracy only by clearly stating that it will remain neutral and non-aligned in the conflict between the West and, and the Soviet Union. So Macron is yeah. actually envisioning uh, that Ukraine takes the same position, and I'm not very sure that he is on the same page with the US and other NATO allies on this issue. President Macron is due in Kiev today. Uh, what are your expectations there? Well, first of all, Macron will confirm that uh, the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine is undisputable, uh, that, uh, that France is a uh, is a, a partner of Ukraine on, the, on this matter and that France is doing everything it can to defuse the crisis and de-escalate militarily. However, what's important is what, what is not going to be spoken about afterwards, namely the proposals that Macron has made in Moscow to Vladimir Putin. Macron needs to find out what the Ukrainians think about it and if there is any chance that Ukraine might agree to some sort of neutralization of the country in the future. Professor Mangot, thank you very much for your insights there. That was Gerhard Mangot, Professor of International Relations at the University of Innsbruck. Well, for more, I'm joined by our Washington correspondent, Carolina Chimoy. Carolina, Chancellor Scholz's U.S. visit coincided with the French president's trip to Moscow. Is there a sense in Washington that all this diplomacy is making another Russian invasion of Ukraine less likely? Well, it's more a hope than a sense, Terry. It's definitely showing how much effort uh, the West is putting into this uh, diplomatic uh, path to, to solve uh, and, and to find a solution um, to this crisis in Ukraine. As you mentioned, uh, the French president met President Putin in Moscow today um, or yesterday, and uh, he is going today to meet uh, the president of Poland, Mr. Duda, and Chancellor Scholz in Berlin for a three-day summit on the crisis in uh, Ukraine. And next week, Chancellor Scholz is going to meet uh, Ukraine's president, Mr. Zelensky, on Monday, and Russia's president, Vladimir Putin on Tuesday. So, yes, uh, the Western world is uh, talking about sanctions, but at the same time, the diplomatic negotiations and the efforts are the current strategy. And this is showing that uh, the West is talking with one voice, or at least this is the image that they want to uh, give uh, to, to Russia. And that is also what Mr. Scholz and President Biden made very clear yesterday. They are united mm. towards Russia, and the next days will definitely be decisive on this. So a big diplomatic push. The German and U.S. leaders are uh, keen to show unity at their meeting. But how united are they really, Carolina, in their approach, the U.S. and Germany, in their approach to Russia and Ukraine? This is a very good question because you're right. They are trying to show unity and this was part of the strategy yesterday, but they did not share any details on how united they are. For example, talking about, about sanctions against Russia. Um, what, what would happen if Russia would invade, U invade Ukraine? How would the sanctions really look like? We don't have details on that. Mm. The gas pipeline, for example, that would deliver liquid gas from Russia to Germany, also known as Nord, Nord Stream 2, was one of of the main points here, uh, and while President Biden made crystal clear that there will be no Nord Stream 2 if Russia invades Ukraine, Chancellor uh, Scholz did not even mention the name of the pipeline and kept on talking about unity. So um, mm. there is a big uh, show trying to show unity, but we don't know further details on this, and apparently there are certain points where they are not really united. 
Now, Germany's reliability as an ally has been questioned, not least because of Berlin's refusal to supply Ukraine with weapons. Has Chancellor Scholz done anything during his visit to assure America's top brass that Germany can be counted on as a defense partner? This aspect on a weapon supply to Ukraine is also a problematic one uh, uh, between Germany and the United States. Scholz has reiterated that Germany is one of the biggest donors to Ukraine with 2 billion euros every year, but he has not mentioned any changes regarding uh, the weapon supply to Russia. And still, unity and our most important allies, these were the key words during yesterday's press conference, but no further details on this problematic issue, Terry. Carolina, thank you so much. Our Washington correspondent, Carolina Chimoy there.